Welcome to the Build a Ruby Gem screencast series. I'm Brandon Hilkert, and in this video, we're going to be looking at how to create a Rails engine. I wrote a blog post a few months ago about calculating relative timestamps in Rails. If you're familiar with the time ago in Rails helper, you get something like 37 minutes ago or one minute ago. And this is really nice for a list of comments or just times associated with certain entries. One thing it doesn't do, though, it doesn't update in real time. So if we load a page and we see that a comment was created one minute ago, we happen to sit on the page for 30 minutes, uh, the comment still says that it, was, that it was created one minute ago. In addition to the relativeness of a timestamp, one challenge with timestamps is always the browser's locale, the user's time zone. And a client-side solution like TimeAgoJS allows us to both have the timestamp updated in real time, so as we sit on the page for 10, 15 minutes, the timestamp will update. It'll also adjust for the browser's locale, so that if we're on the West Coast, uh, it'll update based on that particular time zone. I chose the solution of using TimeAgo and uh, a simple helper and how to integrate it. So we're going to create a, a Rails engine and see how that's set up. As in previous videos, we're going to use the bundle command to generate a new gem for us. And we're going to call this gem time ago. So we bootstrap our gem here. We go into the folder. And like before, we have the similar structure that we're, we're used to. One thing to note about Rails engines is that the file directory structure looks very similar to a Rails application. So if we add an app assets folder, whatever's in that folder will get uh, added to our Rails application. So knowing this, we're going to have a time ago asset here, which I've just hit the page. We can create a vendor directory. And in the vendor directory, create an assets directory. And then assets, we're going to create a JavaScript directory. And you know that this solution looks very similar to the default file structure in a Rails application. So we'll paste in the content of our time ago JavaScript plugin. Next we're going to create a view helper to invoke our time ago plugin. So we'll create an app directory. Inside the app directory we'll create the helpers directory. And inside the helpers directory we'll create the time ago helper. And I'm pasting some content here. This was based on the blog post. So as you can see the time ago plugin uh, view helper will add the content tag with the time type and it'll add the date time uh, option to it, which will then just print out the time uh, in UTC time. Next, I'm going to create a directory similar to that of the asset pipeline. So we're going to create an assets folder and then a JavaScripts folder. In here, we're going to create a time ago JS asset. And inside our new asset, we're going to just paste in some content here. And what this, this is saying is we want to require the jQuery time ago plugin. That, that is the same plugin that's in the vendor directory. And then on a page change, we want to actually invoke the plugin. So assuming we include this asset in our Rails application, our pages will get that behavior. The last piece of the puzzle here, like we saw with a Rail tie, we need to indicate to Rails that our gem is an engine. And we can do this by going into the time ago entry file and adding this piece here. So we're saying that it's an engine. In previous videos, we added a separate uh, file here under here called rail tie. But we don't need to do this here because our gem is pretty simple outside of the assets for Rails. So we'll just keep it in the main namespace here as an engine. I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to bootstrap a Rails application so we can integrate our gem and see how it works. I've created a simple Rails application here with a post controller. And the post controller kind of mimics blog posts. Each post have, has a title and a content uh, body. And you can see I've created two posts here. The only difference I've made is that in the index view, I've added the created at timestamp here in bold, as you can see. So I'm just printing, at create, printing out created at uh, as it stands currently. So the first thing we're going to do is to install our, our time ago gem. And like before, I'm going to use the path option so that it doesn't reach out to Ruby gems for this gem. We're going to bundle. You can see it installed time ago from source here. 
and it complained that the gem spec wasn't complete and it's only because we have some to-do items in the de description of the summary but we can ignore that. So we'll start our server here. We'll refresh, see our application works as it did before. First thing we're going to do to integrate this is to add our asset to our JavaScript manifest here. So this is time ago. If we refresh our page, nothing happens, but we can go into our asset list here and we can see that time ago was added and also the time ago vendor plugin was added as well. So the last piece uh, is to reference our, our view helper method from the view. So we'll say time ago, if we save that, and we can refresh our page, we can see that our time spans timestamps have adjusted to 17 minutes ago. And if I make a new post and create it, you can see that again this has changed to a relative format. And that's all there is to adding a Rails engine. Rails engines have a, quite a few other options like adding migrations and controllers that we won't quite touch on in this video. But just know that there's a lot more you can do with the Rails engine and the Rails guides are a great place to start when trying to learn about the functionality of an engine. Thanks for watching.